America runs on energy, and that energy comes in many forms. Oil, gasoline, coal, nuclear power, solar, wind, and of course, natural gas. All playing a role in satisfying our nation's robust appetite for energy. We need domestic energy to reduce our reliance on foreign oil and bring jobs to our communities. And more than ever, we need that energy to be clean, protecting our health, and of course, the environment. You know that only natural gas meets all of these needs today. But does your neighbor know that? Can you explain why natural gas? I'm here at the Charlie K. Vaughn Training Center. Now, this is a training hub for Atmos Energy. Now, like Atmos, many natural gas companies are putting increased emphasis on technical training. These centers train employees, emergency responders, and others who need to understand how natural gas systems are installed and function in our communities. The center holds training labs, a flow lab, a gas city, classrooms, and much more. The simulated environments allow employees to use tools that they need on the job and practice procedures and processes they might be faced with in the field. We will travel through the facility and equip you to share the exciting news about natural gas, our clean, abundant, responsible, and domestic energy solution. Natural gas reserves are shrinking. False. Geologists and industry experts today say that we have 60 to 90 years of proven natural gas reserves, with additional reserves being discovered each year. First, let's refresh our understanding of what natural gas is and where we get it. Natural gas is a combustible mixture of simple gases, mostly methane, plus small amounts of a few others. It's the cleanest burning fossil fuel and is found in deep underground reservoirs formed of porous rock. The vast majority of our supplies come from right here in the United States. Oil supplies about 41% of America's energy needs. Natural gas and coal make up a close second and third. Currently, nuclear power is an important but much smaller supplier of energy. Each day across this nation, natural gas is used to produce the things we use. Steel, glass, paper, clothing, brick, electricity, and it's an essential raw material for many common products. Now, it may surprise some of you to learn that paints, fertilizer, plastics, antifreeze, dyes, medicines, and explosives are among the important products created in part from natural gas. Slightly more than half of all U.S. homes look to natural gas to provide warmth in the winter. And every day, countless Americans cook their meals, heat their water, dry their clothes, and run other household appliances with clean burning natural gas. What sectors of our economy use the most natural gas? Well, the top consumers in the United States are beginning with the largest, the electric power generation sector, then industry, followed by residential uses, and the commercial sector. Currently, 85% of our natural gas is domestically produced, and most of the 15% that is imported comes from Canada. The U.S. accounts for 24% of the world's natural gas production. Natural gas is bad for the environment. False. Natural gas is the cleanest burning of all the fossil fuels, especially when it is used directly for space and water heating, rather than as fuel to generate electricity. So how is this amazing substance formed and where do we find it? Well, let's start with stage one. All of the oil and gas we use today began as microscopic plants and animals living in the ocean millions of years ago. As these tiny plants and animals lived, they absorbed energy from the sun, which was stored as carbon molecules in their bodies. When they died, they sank to the bottom of the sea, forming layer after layer of sediment, constantly accumulating over millions of years. Stage two. As these carbon-rich deposits were buried deeper and deeper under subsequent layers, heat and pressure on them increased. The amount of pressure and the degree of heat, along with the type of biomass, ultimately determined whether the material became oil or natural gas. More heat produced lighter oil. Even higher heat or biomass made predominantly of plant material produced natural gas. And stage three. After oil and natural gas deposits were formed, they tended to migrate through tiny pores in the surrounding rock. Some oil and natural gas migrated all the way to the surface and escaped. But other deposits were trapped under impermeable layers of rock or clay. This is where we find oil and natural gas today. Natural gas pipelines are dangerous. False. 
The National Transportation Safety Board reports that on average, 50,000 people die in car accidents in the United States each year, while 22 die from natural gas distribution and transmission pipeline related accidents. The Gulf of Mexico is a big but diminishing source of these trapped deposits of natural gas. Now, when we talk about the Gulf of Mexico, we talk about two regions. First, the Gulf of Mexico shelf is nearer the shore and at a relatively shallow water depth. Farther out, the Gulf of Mexico deep water is where a lot of the major production takes place. These are huge reserves and great potential, but it's very expensive to drill and to build infrastructure there. The Rocky Mountains area also holds a significant supply, but like the deep Gulf, getting to it is expensive. When natural gas is cheap, it isn't practical to drill in the Rockies when prices go up, the economic equation changes. The Appalachian region is a historical supply basin where there's still a good amount of production. One advantage of this source is that it's near the northeastern markets. Appalachian production has decreased over time, but there is potential for growth as new production technologies come online. Alaska, meanwhile, makes up 1.2 BCF, and the other states make up approximately 30 BCF. Natural gas is heavier than air. False. When natural gas escapes, it rises and dissipates harmlessly into the atmosphere. Other gases, such as propane, are heavier than air, causing them to pool on the ground, similar to spilled gasoline.